Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. Now, here's your host, Ed Cohen. Hi, this is Ed, and you're on GlobalTVTalkShow.com. Again, thank you for coming. So our special guest today, uh, Barbara Bolt from the uh, Detroit metro area, and she's going to tell you a lot more and in a better way about her than I'm going to, but she is uh, a communication specialist and helps people, uh, mostly business people, who uh, use English as a second or third or fourth language, particularly in a business setting and all the issues and craziness that happens. And Avital Miller, Avital, a beautiful name. Um, she's a veteran of Global TV Talk Show, and thank you for doing it again. And she's going to make us all feel better. So welcome, Avital. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. Right. Now, I, first of all, do you have your book handy so you can hold it up to the to, to the camera and if let I, everybody see it? I have one of my books right here. Okay. Nice. Just bring it a little bit closer to the green light. Yep. Okay, everybody. See that? Healing happens. Um, so in that book, I know you've got other books, but in other writings, including today's post earlier on LinkedIn about knowing your inner self or things to look for because it's impacting your outer self (laughs) and how you appear to people. Um, So um, in that book, Healing Happens, what was the driving force for you to write that book? The driving force was, first of all, I healed from an autoimmune disorder beyond what was expected. And it really just said to me like, oh, there's something beyond the boundaries of what we normally see as life presenting itself. And then I started meeting people who had more extreme stories than mine, who were told that they were going to die in a few months or a few hours. And they turned that around. So with this many miracles out there, I wanted to put that out there and say, what can we all do to reproduce these miracles for ourselves? What are the techniques for that? So this isn't about taking any magic potion. No, oh, no. What about a like a vibrator to keep the blood circulating or something like that? No. Um, <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I mean, one of one of the interviews um, used like a, a tens machine. It was a, a woman who had stroke, and um, it was really it was this personal trainer's friend who had the stroke, and she had this whole list of things she was never going to do again. And he ticked them off one at a time with her regaining functionality of her body, getting a driver's license again, being able to drive. Um, and she was young; she was in her thirties when she had a stroke. She had a couple kids, um, so there was an extra reason for her to want to gain the functionality of her body, and also just not look embarrassing for her kids right to have a mom whose body is a little bit deformed um but it it it, it, there's all these different paths explained in the book because we want to see what's in common among all of these different paths to know that we all have a different path towards healing as well Uh, but how do we go about the path that we choose? So that's part of the guidance there. So yes, some people can take a magic potion. Some people can have a machine that's vibrating on them, right? Some people just need to take a certain type of pill. Some people just need to sit and meditate. Some people need to change their diet, right? So all those different variations are in the book. So, um, about the, the post that you uh, wrote, uh, you, uh, I saw on LinkedIn about an hour ago, mm-hmm. um, something about, I don't remember all the words right now, but something about an awareness of something going on inside and, and to become more aware of how the outside is being impacted. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was really looking into that. I mean, when I had health issues, right, that's, that's affecting my outer and, and you could start with just eating the right thing. And that starts to shift how you look on the outer. But when I started to meditate 
And when I would go to like some of the deeper med meditative experiences as well, I would glow even more than after a normal meditation. And I actually had this funny thing after this one type of meditation, I would literally, I think, cause I caught it after one or two times. So I would kind of get excited when I got home to go look in the mirror and look at my face just to see how much it had transformed from before the experience. And all I did in that gap of time pretty much was meditate. Um, so that's where when we're clearing up what's going on inside, then we can, we can more easily capture the beauty that we want on the outside. But I, I think we create a lot of, a lot of topical things in order to help with our beauty. And that can help a little bit, but really it's, it's our inner health that's going to impact like both on the physical level and the mental, emotional and spiritual level. This episode from the meeting room of global TV talk show is brought to you by porch light rental and destination services. Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs. Visit them at porchlightrental.com. And by airs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at airs.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. Stop dreaming and start living overseas. International lifestyle consultant Emily Braun can help you seamlessly transition to your new life in your dream destination. Whether you are a retiree, a digital nomad, or a mobile executive, Emily Braun can make your transition overseas a success. Visit emilybraun.com. Kutalis is a global group with a worldwide footprint. With 16 agencies in 10 countries, Kutalis offers companies and mobile professionals a unique combination of HR services and options. Find us at kutalis.com. Take your communication skills to the next level. Barbara Bolt of Bolt Global has a passion to make you shine. As our globe expands, effective intercultural communication and presentation is a must. Visit boltglobal.com. I got to oh. ask you a question about here, if I can jump in for a sec. Um, when you say meditate, mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay, in English, that means being quiet uh, with yourself in a quiet place, right? Uh, it means a lot more, but it, that, that's well, it, part you of to, it. Right? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say quiet place. Um, but it does mean being, being quiet with yourself because don't forget the meditation comes from India, which is a very, very noisy place. Okay. So that's really <laughs> interesting. Um, so does it also mean, or does it have to mean, I, see, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm asking for your guidance mm -hmm. that you find God or ask to find God and put yourself out like asking for guidance yeah. about something because you don't, you know, you don't know what to do. Yeah. Ab no, that, about I something. Mean, that's, that's beautiful. Like asking for guidance um, via meditation. Um, I mean, the first thing I would say is that everyone has a different definition specifically of, of what God is. Um, and it, it de however you define God, um, what I want to say, though, if you believe that it's something inside of you um, or an energy in the world, so if you believe in either one of those aspects with, with the idea of God, um, that really what we're doing is we're just, it, it's like a beautiful stained glass window and it's covered with dirt. And so we're just taking the dirt off. So I believe we're already perfect. And all we need to do is realize that and just take away the layers that prevent us from seeing that perfection within. Now, and today everyone puts a different intention into meditation. Everyone has a different definition of meditation. Some people might just want to clear their mind. Some people might want to de-stress. They might want to relax. Um, 
you know, that majorly affects the health of your body, the functioning of your mind and how you interact in relationships, right? Barbara's a relationship expert there, how to be a leader and communicate. Um, so it'll help you with that. And um, so, yes, you, you can go in and, and say, I want to find God, right? Which really means that, that I want to, to connect with however I define God. And I feel like that's a very powerful way to do meditation for sure. And you can also go in with question in mind, right? And say, okay, well, I'm having this challenge, um, you know, so I'm setting the intention to get an answer to it. Um, the interesting thing is just in general with life is that the answers come as we're ready for them. Uh, so sometimes we are going to get the answers within a sitting meditation. And sometimes we are not going to get it in that moment um, because that's not the answer in the moment. Like, I guess, I guess you could say we always get the answer in this moment that we need, which might be nothing, which means just carry on as you have been <laughs> um, until the next answer comes. But it, I believe that it, when you set the intention and you're opening yourself up, you're starting to look for answers. You're starting to listen. You're starting to develop your intuition. So when you're also in a quieter moment, like driving somewhere when it's, when it's a peaceful drive, um, or when you're in the shower, right. And you don't have necessarily all these things to think about. Those are sometimes the open spaces that these messages come in, but maybe it also just helps reshape your life and you just start to see unravel and unfold in front of you what is meant to happen to help answer that question. And so there's no specific knowledge or awareness. You're just actually living the answer. Barbara? Oh, you want, yeah, wow. Yeah, <laughs> jump in. Yeah, this sounds pretty I'm cool. I'm blown away, Avital, and um, I'm gonna read your book. <laughs> I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to do some inner healing right now that so it will show on the outside because I suffer from things like rashes and things like that and I do a lot of work with diet and all of that because I have a nutrition degree actually from centuries ago but I, I find what you talk about and what you're doing really really fascinating I do meditate every day but it's not always a silent meditation I mean it's a silent I'm silent but it's guided I use various guided meditations I do a lot of yogic breathing, which I really love because it really stimulates the brain. It gets energy flowing. So if I have a morning, if I wake up feeling a little um, foggy, I do my 15 minutes of yogic breathing and I'm like good to go. So I, I've never been a person who sat and meditated for hours and hours. That is an experience I've not had, but I totally believe in, uh, in what you're doing. I think it's marvelous. And you are just so beautiful. You glow, <laughs> you absolutely glow. So Thank I, uh, yeah, it's, it's an amazing thing to be in your presence. I'm enjoying Aww. it. That is so sweet of you to say. And yet the, the, you're not necessarily meant to meditate for hours and hours. Um, and if you think about what is your intention with meditation, um, is it to get an answer? You know, not everyone needs to sit that long to get the answer. Is it to de-stress? Well, if you do it fully in the time that you do it, you don't have to do it for that long. And this is fun too, because I've also been trained in restorative yoga. And I said it a little bit with Judith Hansen Lasseter, who's done a lot of scientific research in connection with restorative yoga. And she said the average person takes 15 minutes to come to full relaxation. So restorative pose needs to be at least 20 minutes. So you actually get five minutes within that relaxation. Um, but that that's not a lot of time really in the span of things. Like if you think about like how, how long do you quickly get sucked into the rabbit hole of social media? You know, that can easily go 30 to 60 minutes. Um, you know, of our time. So it, it's very easy to, to spend that small amount of time in relaxation. Now, some people are going to meditate for hours and hours on the end also because they enjoy sitting in that space. Um, now I lived in a yoga community for almost seven years. Um, and, and so I was around people who would, you know, meditate for hours. And I initially was meditating about three to five hours a day, um, not all at once, 
Um, but yeah, but that was, that was my life then. And that was what I also thought I needed to do. And I have a lot of willpower. Um, and I knew, I knew the, this, the spiritual teacher, the spiritual guide, when he made this comment, he, how do I say real spiritual guides know how to make a, a comment where you kind of have to think, but you, it's, you know, they're saying it, but they're not just like being direct. And he's like looking at my toes and my um, second toe, um, you know, really matches up. And, and I think one of them is slightly longer than the, the first toe. And he goes, you know, what is long, what does a long second toe mean? It means lots of willpower. <laughs> I have to sit there and go, why is he telling me, you know, that I have a lot of willpower? Um, what, what benefit, what's the use of this? And I had realized that I had put a lot of willpower into my meditation and my spiritual practice without actually tuning into what I needed and what was right in each moment. Um, so I, so, so wait a minute, I, I have to jump in here and inject, uh, me, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh um, Hearing you talk about your, your long toe uh, brings back a memory of <laughs> college days uh, when I was editor of the college paper and I had to write an editorial about something that I had no idea what I was doing. And so I was sitting in my college dorm. Okay, this is last century and then some. And so I was looking at my big toe and realized how big this thing was relative to the rest of my foot mm -hmm. and my toe. And I, I sat there and, and I imagined, what would life be without that big toe? I had the rest of the foot, but the toe wasn't working or wasn't there, right? I'd probably fall over or something, right? But I mean, so the role of the big toe in your life is that similar to your kind of meditation or am I, was I stoned or something when I was doing that? <laughs> well, it's one thing I would say, I mean, yeah, sure, like, like physically there's a reason, you know, why we have five toes and it helps us stand up and right. I'm a dancer. And so I can't imagine like going up on my toes, right. Without that toe. Um, and, but there are meridian lines also and, and connections of energy. So it wouldn't just affect the toe, it would probably affect other organs or, um, you know, energy movement in the body to not have that toe. Um, no, we didn't, we didn't meditate on our toe. Um, if that, if that answers anything, but I, I was, I had, um, been doing point ballet at the time. And so my, you know, my feet would hurt sometimes. So I was kind of moving my toes around and that's, that's how we noticed it. We, we weren't meditating in that moment. Um, I think we were, we were sitting around just to, to chat or something. Point um, ballet is when you wear those funny shoes. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah, the heart, okay. with the wooden. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you that go means you great... have willpower because that hurts. That hurts a lot. <laughs> I was, I was very lucky. I mean, I never did tons of it and I didn't um, have the same pain and reactions mm -hmm. that other people did. It was still painful. Um, but you also train as with anything on how to do it better. Um, I think every sport actually has like a little bit of pain to it. I mean, even some of my friends, they do volleyball. We're about to do volleyball day and I'm thinking about it and I'm like, it's going to hurt my wrist every time the, you know, the ball comes at me fast and I have to hit it. <laughs> I have um, a funny volleyball story. I was a, an exchange student to, in Japan when I was 17 uh -huh. and I was in this rural school for a month. And of course I was the tallest person in this school mostly. And there may have been a couple guys who were taller than me, but they recruited me for the volleyball team because I was tall and I could, you know, spike over the net. I could have, if I'd had the skill. Um, but what I realized it, it hurts your wrist. It does hurt. I, I was always had bruises up my arms after volleyball. But the other thing was they, they expected you to sacrifice your body and throw yourself on the floor to rescue a ball. And I was just like, really? I, I don't have that kind of willpower. I'm not, <laughs> there's no way. I know. So, and I think you sometimes volleyball. you have to love it um, enough yeah. to, to just say that that is minor compared to the extreme amount of joy, excitement, yeah. whatever that energy is that you enjoy from it. Yeah. Um, and then that, that outweighs it. 
Um, if it's okay, I want to, I want to say one more thing about, um, not meditating for long periods of time, just to also help, help people. Cause we're not necessarily brought into this world as humans to withdraw from it all the time. Um, and so it is completely appropriate that you're not necessarily sitting and meditating for hours because most of us are really meant to go into and experience what's actually happening in this world, but it's wonderful to just give us a little bit of that time of reflection to step back um, and be kind of an outsider and let go of our attachments that normally pull us um, so we can more enjoyably go into living this life. When I find for myself, I've been meditating every day, more or less, probably for three years now, or maybe even longer. I think I started in 2018. So how long ago was that? I don't even I can't four years. count four years. There we go. I do think <laughs> I just hit four years in April. What I have found is, and I do a lot of guided meditation, visualization kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And what's been interesting is how much better I am at it now after this, after building the muscle, right? It, it's people give up on meditation way too early because they think they're supposed to be doing it in a certain way. Maybe, Ed, maybe that's kind of your impression of meditation. Like, I don't know how to do this. And I try to do it and I fall asleep or I try to do it and I get distracted. Well, we all get distracted. And the, probably the first year isn't that much fun because you get distracted. But if you stay with it, mm -hmm. you then begin to reap the reward of being able to go to that place. This is for me, going to that place of visualizing something much quicker and in a much more focused way. And I can't say I've ever felt transported necessarily during a meditation. However, mm -hmm. I do, I, I see vivid colors. You know, I'm able to create that inner picture that I do think then helps us get to a next step or, you know, whatever it is that we're visualizing about. But I, I do think it's something that people hold themselves to much too high of a standard. They, you know, I tried meditation, but I just couldn't do it. You can do yeah. it. It's just not having an expectation. Well, so, and, Barbara, okay, go ahead, please. Oh yeah. I mean, I want to say this too, because, because I'm, I'm a meditation expert, you know, in, in, um, in leading so many programs and having so many trainings in it, um, that what I would say to that person, and this is why I developed my Sin Succeed program as well, is um, if they have that desire for what they feel like the benefits would be of meditation, they just need to try a different one. So the meditation yeah. practice um, that I practice and that I teach has uh, actually very physical techniques like we stand up, we breathe, we tense and release muscles, we move in all these directions. So that's the first thing. And then the next thing is a structure of breathing techniques as well. So mm -hmm. that they're fun and they automatically help relax and clear the mind. So by the time you get to that point where you're just sitting there and you don't have to do anything, first of all, you're excited not to have to do anything by that point. Um, but but it, it's the mind, the mind is already relaxed and turned off. So it's easy and it's enjoyable. And the other thing is that you only want to do it for as long as it's enjoyable. And, and that's part of kind of the training. You know, you could start with two minutes and five minutes. And as you enjoy getting into that quiet space, you'll naturally want to do it longer and longer. Um, so we definitely want to keep it fun and find the right techniques to help us do it. But I believe that everyone has that potential. I was really hyper um, <laughs> when I started. Um, really, really hard to start meditating. I was just such an active person. And so I learned all these different tricks and techniques to help myself slowly relax into it. But so I, 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 I've, I've got a, a thing for both of you. Barbara, first, um, it, do you use the idea of the concept of meditation to help people learn how to speak better English in business? Not necessarily meditation, but definitely breathing and some visualization. Those are things I use in my practice to help Meaning people calm. you get people to imagine what it's like to say things in a certain way before you can they do that. have to say it. 
Right. You can do that. I do that for myself. I do a, a neural programming. I'm becoming a speaker and I'm using neural programming to help myself envision myself in front of a crowd, in front of a room speaking. And I, I could use that in my practice as well. But for people who experience nervousness at the thought of speaking or when they have to get in front of a room, you can visualize. You, I do a visualization of grounding. So seeing your roots coming out of your feet, going into the ground, seeing yourself being rooted in that place that I find gives people some stability if they're very nervous. And then yogic breathing, um, these breathing techniques where then there are several, and I'm sure Avital knows them better than I do, but just a few, it's a, a minute of breathing before they have to go on can help people center themselves and can make some of those nerves go calm down and go away. Thank you so much for that. Avital, I I noticed, uh, now I've asked you this before in a prior show, but Mm. um, I've noticed your your arm um, band uh, in this position. And um, so does that give you some message or strength? Well, everything gives you what you believe it gives you. Hmm. Cool. Um, So, I, I mean, I can tell you why initially I, I put it on and the purposes between these two different things. Um, but today, I mean, some people might hate me for saying this. Um, it's a little more like cool decoration today. Um, <laughs> well, some people wear a tattoo, you know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, but it is, I mean, it's, um, so it, it just has the power that I give it. Uh, but what these are um, the stones of the nine major planets. Um, so that's going to help balance out your energy overall. So if you get an astrology reading by like an Eastern astrologer, and I don't know if they need to be Jyotish Eastern. I'm saying these words for those of you actually looking up astrologers, um, you'll look up those words, but um, they're going to tell you what's the first main stone that you should be wearing. And, um, and so it's, I have, I communicate a lot. This is a mercury stone emerald. Um, and it, it touches the skin. So it, it goes through the ring. And so it, it's like, a, I, I'm a Gemini stone. and I'm in Gemini now. And mm-hmm. my strong suit is mercury. Yeah. So, um, but you're probably also talking from the Western standpoint Yeah. and from the Western standpoint, um, I would end up wearing a very Saturn stone, um, Sapphire. And what that does is it creates hardship and death. Um, so, (laughs) okay. Um, yeah, so be careful when you wear your Western birthstone and I would get an Eastern reading as well and, and like learn more about the stones, um, because I already have a very strong Saturn in my chart, so I don't need any more amplification of that. And so that's actually why like on this, you know, even to create balance because the Saturn is really strong. So I just have a light blue instead of a Sapphire on here. Cause we, We've already got enough Saturn on me. You know, it's like Mars is really strong. So a lot of people, they need a much bigger, this is the coral is the Mars stone. They need a much bigger Mars stone. Um, but I have plenty of that. So I don't need, I don't need that to be big. And of course I felt like it looked better like that. Um, but when you, when you get a reading, they're going to look at, at quite a few things, not just one sign in your Eastern astrology chart. Um, you know, to, to say what's the number one. And then they give you like a number two or a three also stone. If you want to just start with one and then in the future get more uh, and you could wear, you know, around your neck, like it doesn't necessarily have to be in a certain place, but I did ask like which hand and um, which, uh, which finger also to be wearing it on, you know, the um, right arm is believed to project energy out. The left arm is believed <clears throat> to receive energy. Uh, my astrologer was like, well, you're already like receiving, you know, like, like too much, um, it was like attention or something. And so you need to, um, like through beauty. So amplify it out, you know, and mercury is really about anyways, the communication is really about sending the, the energy out. Um, So that's kind of what this one is. And then um, this one is the perfect combination of 
uh, bronze, silver, and gold to help amplify and protect your aura. And um, that was that blend was developed by like my guru's guru, so Paramahansa Yogananda's guru, Swami Sri Peshwar. So I, I think that's where it comes from. And so you get like uh, somebody who's who's very deep on um, this spiritual path with um, having Yogananda as their guru and is a metal smith, so they know how to create that. And that's where you get those. So you don't just go and, and get ran, random bronze, silver, and gold blended together. We are pleased to welcome Adamo Education as a proud sponsor of Global TV Talk Show. The concept of a micro school is the reimagining of the one room schoolhouse. My name is Tamara Becker. I'm the president and CEO of Adamo Education. The micro school concept really does not just lend itself to the personalization and the customization of learning, but also the social development and fostering that sense of love for learning. Unlike what we see in traditional brick and mortar schools, we have multiple grade levels in the same learning space. Students can be enriched by the socialization that they get, as well as the academic support from peers. What differentiates Adamo is the fact that we are taking the best pieces of brick and mortar, of digital, and then at-home learning. Students here can come five days a week. They can come four hours a day. It will really just depend on what is best for the student and for the parent. To enroll, just reach out via phone, text, or email, and we'll have that personalized conversation, and we'll be able to get you all set. Check us out at adamoeducation.org. Become a global player in your field. Cross Culture To Go provides virtual support for your global business and career success. We can help you thrive in 140 plus countries and markets. On the web at crossculturetogo.com. So all of this says to me, and I'm just a happy talk show host here, but uh, all of this says to me that you are really sensitive to you your inner workings, your feelings, of course, and the uh, expression of those in, in sync with what's swirling around you on the outside. Mm -hmm. And like, whoa. So some days or portions of days are probably um, more, uh, I don't want to call it traumatic, but more uh, energetic that you're either watching or you're out there counteracting those forces. Mm -hmm. I, I'll yeah. bet because I, I know that when, when I'm finding energy to meet a task deadline or something that I dream up that I need to do in my business or my life, I'm much more aggressive and much more uh, not analytical. I mean, just energy. Like I'm picturing myself as a gladiator fighting the lions, you know, but in a nice way. <laughs> Great, a peaceful warrior. <laughs> Take some anyway, snacks for those lions. Uh, I, I talk. <laughs> this is this is your show, not mine. So, Barbara, <laughs> what do you do to help people feel more relaxed about learning how to express themselves? You know, in a in a I don't want to call it traumatic, but it's certainly a sensitive time when they're trying to make a business presentation, right? Well, one of the easiest or best ways to um, deliver well is to practice. So one thing I help people do is get very clear. People need to be clear in their mind about what they want to say before they're going to say it well. And uh, so one of the things I tell people is that you need to work carefully on your content you need to have a structure and be very clear about what you want to say. And then you need to practice, practice, practice so that you can deliver that seamlessly or as seamlessly as possible. A and to what extent do you use um, acting lessons mm -hmm. to help people imagine themselves going through something hard? You know, like picture it. If you can believe it and see it, then you can do it. I actually haven't used that. 
It isn't, that isn't, has not been part of my practice. I tend to be very communication oriented. It's not that it wouldn't work and it wouldn't be a good idea. And maybe I should incorporate something like that in my, in my speaking practice. But most of what I do is help with clarity so that people get very clear about how they want to say what they want to say and put a structure to it. However, maybe I should consider having them visualize themselves in front of the room um, delivering. I'm sure it would help. So what we're talking about here is communication style and the basis of it or the engineering of how to achieve something. Avital, when you're, I mean, let's take this idea that I just dreamt up out of nowhere. It just came uh, with your work, which is totally, I'm sorry, totally internal and then expression external. Is that right? Um, yeah, I mean, I, um, so the, what I started to do was, it was definitely say, how do we set up the internal in order to live our daily life? And what can we do in, in each moment while we're in the external to stay in a great state of mind? Um, so yes, it's, it's, it's both, uh, but there's a huge emphasis on how do we actually take that into our life um, so that we can have the relationships that we want, so that we can have the success in business that we want. We can have the energy that we want in the moment. You know, we can feel as happy as we want to feel in any moment. That's really cool. Avital, to what extent do you, uh, do you personally have certain foods when you're facing certain define challenges the, the, the food creates some energy right or a sense of well-being or something right yeah yeah um no and, and this is this is fun too because you know i even have a whole program about how to spiritualize your diet um mm. and every single food has a different impact right and our lives are not static <laughs> So we want to create balance um, and foods is one of those ways to help support balance, um, but we are eating anyways. So we might as well be aware of the impact of different foods on us um, and as seasons change and, you know, and Denver's really funny. It's cloudy and cold today. You know, it's fun. I see uh, Barbara with the fan going, I've got a heater going. Like I should be wearing a sweater right now. Um, <laughs> I just didn't, I just didn't like, you know, coordinate myself well enough to find a, a sweater with, that goes well with this top, but, um, <clears throat> but that's it. And, and then we've also had days that have already been in the eighties and even nineties. And, and then you just had a snowstorm. We did. <laughs> mm, crazy. We did. We did. Um, so, you know, yesterday I thought, okay, like, it's really good. I have, I have all these vegetables in the fridge and I'm going to make all these smoothies, but then he's sort of feeling the weather outside and it's just cloudy, rainy day. And I was like, no, no, I have to have like warm, hot foods today. Um, you know, so that's one way to balance it. There's, there's other things you can, you can check how you're feeling by what your cravings are. So if we are doing too much, if we're too active, which is very common, then one of the things that we commonly crave, which somehow balances major activity are sweets. Mm. That is one of the things, if you want to help prevent your sweet tooth, is just make sure that you add more relaxation into your life. Um, and you're not pushing yourself beyond what feels right in each moment. Well, it's fascinating conversation. Audience, mm -hmm. this is not rehearsed, unscripted. <laughs> so, um, Avital, what are you working on now for the summer? Uh, for this summer, I am the biggest thing that I'm working on is called, called the Wow Jubilee. And I call myself a galactic experiences creator. And I had mentioned that I'm uh, creating these big charity events. And it's, it's not just a charity event. I wanted to create fun for conscious people. Um, 
you know, when, when you, when you live in a, a yoga community for so many years, and then you move out into the world and, um, you know, you, but you want to go do fun things, but you want to do it with people who are really saying conscious and present. Um, and I think when you're younger, you, you kind of run across a lot of people who aren't necessarily doing that. Um, that last aspect of staying, staying conscious when we're doing fun things together. So I wanted to create a space where, where that is happening. And then we've got charity. Um, I wanted to develop community. I want community, but it's also a really great gift to offer my clients. Uh, but then we're also looking at uh, what's what's been happening over the last couple of years and what could potentially happen to our economy. Um, but I believe that if if that we can create our own economy in a way if all of our local businesses are supporting each other. Uh, so I wanted to create opportunities to gain exposure, visibility for different local businesses and entrepreneurs to share their gifts. Um, and then kind of sneak in a couple aspects of spiritual upliftment through creativity and expansion um, in these events. So I really just try to create beautiful events that have a lot of parts and pieces to them and multiple events. So even though the, the main event, Wow Jubilee, is on September 11th, and it's going to be in a beautiful spot in the Botanic Gardens. And our intention is to help end trafficking and help people recover from trafficking in terms of the charity side. And I'm bringing together all of the Colorado organizations so that we can collaborate and create more power with that. But we'll have a beautiful dinner and entertainment the whole evening, both kind of standing around us with like stilt walkers and jugglers and blue hoogers, but then also have um, high end performances on stage, dance performances that are expressing the stories of going from trauma to our potential. Um, but we are having our first event on July 8th, uh, as, as part of this. Um, and it, and this is one of the things where I'm, I'm talking to the different entrepreneurs and finding out some of their needs, what's going on. And we create creative things together. So we're doing a summer and Halloween party. Um, and so one of the things I've been working with is this lady who creates, uh, feather angel wings by hand. And she was in the fashion show of our last event. And then we're going to have the angels do a little movement piece in the next event. And um, she is needing to move out of her home and needing to sell a whole bunch of her stuff. And normally she would host this big Halloween party, which she doesn't know if in her new home that's going to be possible. She's like, okay, I'm just going to sell all my decorations. I'm going to sell all my costumes and I need to sell some of the wings, right? Because I'm not actually going to have enough as much space uh, where I'm moving to and let's throw a party so that we can sell these things so I can do one last Halloween party, but I won't be able to do it on Halloween. But then we're also using proceeds from the party um, to raise money for the trafficking mission. So <clears throat> that's that's kind of the creative ways where I just start to get into conversations with different entrepreneurs and create things together. Tell people how they can find you again. Avital Miller, mm -hmm. you're on LinkedIn. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's easy. But is there a specific site that you want to announce? Yeah, well, the, I mean, the easy site that will take you everywhere is if you go to avitalmiller.com. And actually, one of the easy ways to to get to some of these other events is just go into the calendar tab on there. And then that'll link you to the specific websites. Uh, my book is at healinghappensbook.com. That'll take you to the whole so, thing. So I'm looking at your necklace, like we all are. So <laughs> what kind of stones are those? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but they're purple looking yeah. i know i know this is one of the things um that i i got from my mother my mother passed away so you know, every time i wear something that came from my mother whether i i you know stole it from her her jewelry cabinet or she gave it to me as a gift um, it's just yeah, always the destined to have it yeah <laughs> how cool barbara yeah. what are you doing this summer that you want to talk about <laughs> I'm uh, starting a, to do something once a month it called uh, a discussion around develop your international talent for HR managers, HR professionals, helping them talk about how they develop their talent uh, and what they do and what they might do, so exploring that. So I'm going to be doing that once a month. I'm also planning to start uh, a discussion group for women in organizations whose first language isn't English to talk about some of their challenges. 
So that conversation I expect to be along lines of cultural challenges, gender challenges, communication challenges. So those are a couple of the things I, I'm kicking off this summer. Oh, interesting. So I'm just so you know, um, I've been thinking about uh, launching a consultancy uh, alongside this other stuff that I'm doing. And so it's, it's called global PR. Uh, so in other words, public relations and utilizing services. It's the same old stuff, only with a focus on upskilling and reskilling. And I know how to do and I know how to apply and I don't know where to apply this stuff, meaning articles, TV, talk show, interview, radio, podcast, interview, talk show stuff, articles, white paper. And so we're offering this service now and um, I'm happy about it. So that's, and that's geared for entrepreneurs and small business owners. Uh, big companies, uh, it's not appropriate because they have their own system and, their, and many rules, but small business people need the professional PR services for themselves. And they may take a stab at it and then put it aside and move on to do something else. I offer an engineered curated system of a, what it is, but also the applications and the management of it across the year. So I call it the global press club and um, more about that later. It's a lot of fun for me. It's really not work. If I happen to be so lucky to get a whole bunch of clients, boy, it'll be a lot of work. <laughs> and then I'm going to have to hire someone. <laughs> but uh, we'll do more about that later. Avital, so um, you've been sitting so long. Do you want to get up and do a dance or show us some? Of, <laughs> some... Like you like to dance? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, you're this bundle of energy. So I'm just I know. Well, <laughs> wondering. You're from from time to time, those of you who follow me on social media, you'll see me post dance videos. And um, a lot of times I'm just improvising, uh, but I'll just play some music and create an expression from my heart. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for being on Global TV Talk Show again, and please come back and uh, we'll get you this program uh, in about a week for your own usage. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Nice Thank to meet you, Avatar. Thank you, too, Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day and stay safe.